Hey, how's everyone doing? It's been a really rough past month, month and a half. My old camera fell and broke, and I wasn't able to get a new camera until the middle of June. So I was cameraless for about a month. And on top of that, there's just been the Canadian wildfires with the smoke heavily reducing the transparency at night. And, you know, that's not good for doing astrophotography whatsoever. So, there's been that. And it's also just been storming constantly, cloudy constantly. And if it is clear, the humidity is so high at night that there's just so much fog. So, astrophotography's really kind of been out of the question a lot for me lately. I was able to get a pretty good wide field shot of the Milky Way um, using a Sigma 30 millimeter lens and my new camera, which is a Sony a6400. So this was about two hours, it was a little over two hours of exposure time. Here's the stacked image of all the exposures. I got my process icons here. Um, I'm going to unlink the stretch, give it a more natural appearance. And then I'm going to open my histogram and I'm going to put that on my histogram and then onto my image and then I'm gonna kill the stretch and there we go now we got the stretch applied to the image there's some really bad vignetting going on here so let's save this as a TIFF file and open it up in Photoshop you hear my cat going crazy in the background, I apologize. She's got the zoomies. Anyway, we are just going to lasso around the Milky Way and then inverse it and use gradient exterminator on medium and medium. And then we're going to save that and we're gonna reopen that. So here's before gradient exterminator and here's after gradient exterminator. So let's get rid of the before and let's get to work on this. I would say we could probably play with the histogram a little bit first. So I'm just gonna open this up, bring it to the edge of the data here. And then bring this down close to the edge of the data here. And that seems like a pretty good starting point. We could probably bring this up a little bit again, actually. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the stars because we need to process the stars and the Milky Way separately. There's some really bad vignetting going on here it's almost like you'll see it a lot more once I remove the stars but there's like a ring that just goes like this and it's from my lens the Sigma 30 millimeter lens now I didn't take flat frames of course why would I have taken flat frames lazy lazy unacceptable <laughs> if I would have taken flat frames it would have helped significantly with that but we can still work around it and the stars need processed separately also because there's so much chromatic aberration going on in these stars you can see uh, let's find a good example here right here see this purple halo the red halo we don't want that but we can't get rid of that in the image the full image or it's going to take color out of the lagoon nebula and Triffid nebula also and we don't want that so I'm gonna use Star Exterminator and let's run it. All right, so we have separated the stars and the galaxy. And now you can really see what I mean by the vignetting here. It's pretty nasty. And now you can really see what I mean by the chromatic aberration with the stars. So I'm gonna save the stars as stars and I'm going to save the galaxy as starless and then I'm gonna open both of them in Photoshop 
Alright, so let's try to make this work first. So, I'm gonna lasso around the galaxy again. Inverse. Go to Gradient Exterminator. I'm gonna run it on Fine and High. Much better. Now the stars, I'm going to open up Camera Raw Filter. And I'm just going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see the purple around the star here. If you go down to defringe and you turn up your purple slider, you can see it gets rid of the chromatic aberration. And then these red ones here, you can slide this over and get rid of the red as well. These ones that have a little bit of blue on them could even slide it over a little bit more and get some of that blue out of there other than that that's fine there's one more thing I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna go to a brush mask and then I'm gonna turn up my saturation and then I'm just gonna paint over some of these parts of the Milky Way here. Okay, so I'm gonna run Hasta La Vista Green. And that will get rid of any green in the image because we don't want green. Green is not really a natural color in space other than like planetary nebulae. So I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna save the stars. And then I'm gonna come back in here close these and open what we just did in Photoshop. So I'm going to make my stars a little bit brighter I think with curves and I'm just going to click and drag like that just to make them a little bit brighter and then apply it. And then I'm going to come to this and open curves for this. Now this is where we can make this look really nice. We're probably gonna have to run Gradient Exterminator again, not gonna lie, but this is where we can start to really bring out the Milky Way. So, let's say, now, recombine the stars and the starless image, and I'm going to see how it looks. So there we go. I think that looks really good. That looks sick. I, I like how bright the stars are. Some people, you know, might want to reduce the stars to focus more on the galaxy, but I think they really add to, like... Wide field shots like this, I think all the stars just make it look so much cooler. Now, if you're doing like, you know, a lot higher focal length stuff, like this is only 30 millimeters focal length. If you're doing like 300 plus, 200 plus, and you're focusing on like a single object that's really small, that's when reducing the stars will be better because then it's you know, drawing so much attention to just, you know, the deep sky object, like, or like the nebula or the galaxy that you photographed. But in like a situation like this, I think this is the way to go. So I'm going to close those because we don't need them anymore. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this. I don't think it needs gradient exterminator again, honestly. I think it looks totally fine. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's bring that up to about here and crop it like that there we go so if you zoom into this you're gonna see there's a lot of noise I see some color noise now this is really grainy so to fix that I'm gonna use noise exterminator and this might soften the stars make them you know a little bit smaller and that's okay. So we're going to run Noise Exterminator, and that's going to make this image look smooth. 
So we've ran Noise Exterminator and you zoom in, it's a lot smoother looking. So here's the before and here's the after. So it did reduce a lot of these like little tiny stars that you can see, but that's okay. It still looks great. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Blur Exterminator, which is gonna sharpen up everything. It's gonna make the stars nice and spherical. It's gonna make the Lagoon Nebula have a little bit more you know, detail in it. Just overall make it look much better than it already does. So here's Blur Exterminator. Now I always used to run it with automatic PSF, but apparently that's not how you're supposed to do it. So you have to manually input the PSF and to find that you have to extract your luminance right here and then go to script image analysis and FWHM eccentricity and then you're going to hit measure. And this median FWHM right here, this number right here that it's going to give you is the number that you're going to put in for Blur Exterminator. So 2.59 right here, 2.59. That's the number that we're going to put in, 2.59. There you go. And and I'm going to I'm going to adjust the settings here just a little. I'm going to leave this at 0.9. I'm going to turn the star halos up. Then I'm going to turn sharpen stars down to I say 0.1 and then we're gonna run that all right so blur exterminator is done here's the before and here's the after let's zoom into a place where it's really gonna make a big difference so we'll go back to the before and here's the lagoon nebula so let's apply blur exterminator you can see it's a lot sharper there's a little you know it's bringing out some of that detail in here some of those dark lanes and it's not perfect obviously that's really small in the image and, you know you're not gonna you know zoom in that much like you're, you're not gonna be like looking at this like like up real close but if you got like the full image here just like this especially if you just post it on social media it's going to look amazing. Probably one more thing you could do with this, and that's go to Script, Utilities, Dark Structure, Enhance. And I'm just going to leave it at the default settings and hit OK. And it's just going to do its thing. Alright, so as you can see, this area right here, there's the before, and there's the after. It makes a very subtle difference, but it really adds to the the whole image I feel so yeah here's uh, here's our final image and I, I think it looks really nice but yeah like as for uh, the rest of the you know summer and early fall I'm you know really hoping that the the storms calm down we get some nice clear nights and the Canadian wildfire smoke doesn't you know blow down here too much because there's still a lot of targets I'd like to go after. I'd really like to go after the Veil Nebula and uh, maybe the uh, Dumbbell Nebula, uh, the Eagle Nebula. Um, yeah, and I'd, I'd like to start collecting a lot of data on the Andromeda Galaxy, which is going to be ready, rising at a fairly decent time here very soon. But as for this, that's about it. I uh, hope you liked the video. See you around.